Good evening, and welcome to the Twix County Board of Education meeting. Thank you to our in-person and online communities and stakeholders for joining us this evening. It is my pleasure to call the Twix County Board of Education meeting to order. Today is Tuesday, September 13, 2022, and the time is now 6.02 p.m. May we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. At this time, may I have a motion, uh, uh, entertain a motion, to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting, and meeting date and time being Tuesday, September 13, 2022, meeting scheduled time at 6 p.m. Motion has been probably made by Ms. Blackshear. May I have a second? Seconded by our Vice Chair, Mr. Ross. Any discussion? No discussion? I know you're by saying aye. I raise your hand if you accept this motion to approve our tonight's agenda. Aye. Any opposes? No opposes. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you. I want to say good evening to our board members and all present but one. Good evening, Ms. King. Good evening, Ms. Blackshear. Good evening, Mr. Ross. Evening, and to sir. our esteemed superintendent. Good evening, Dr. Matt Buller. Good evening. At this time, may I have a motion or entertain a motion to accept the approval of our minutes for our August 9th, 2022 BOE work session? I move that motion. Motion been properly made by our Vice Chair, Mr. Rouse. May I have a second? Second. Second by District 3, Ms. Rhonda King. Any discussion? No discussion. I know you by saying aye. Raise your hand if you accept the motion to approve our BOE work session on August 9th, 2022. Aye. aye. Any opposes? No opposes. That motion carries unanimously. At this time, may I have a, uh, a motion to accept our August 18, 2022 BOE called session minutes. So moved. Motion has been properly made by Ms. King. May I have a second? Second. Second by our Vice Chair, Mr. Rouse. Any discussion? No discussion. I know you by saying aye. Raising your hand if you accept the motion to approve our BOE called session on August 18, 2022 minutes. Aye. Any opposes? No opposes. That motion carries unanimously. At this time, I'll ask Ms. Blackshear to give us an ethics statement. Thank you. In accordance with regulations set forth by the Georgia Ethics Commission, it is the duty of every board member to avoid both conflicts of interest. Does any board member have any known conflicts of interest? now, Mr. Chair, we will proceed with our agenda. Thank you, Madam Blackshear. At this time, do any board members have any comments or remarks they would like to make to our general public this evening? Seeing none, at this time we'll have superintendent comments and remarks. Good evening again, Dr. Bullock. Good evening, Board Chair Harris. Proceed. Vice Chair Rouse, board sure. members. Uh, it is great to be with you again and to be in the company of our community, those that are with us tonight in our board meeting and those that are joining us virtually. I do have a few announcements I'd like to bring to the attention of our community. We want to remind our parents and our guardians that progress reports did go home last Friday. If you have not seen them, ask your son or your daughter, your grandchild, your, your niece, your nephew, ask them for their progress report. They did go home last Friday. So please make sure you review that progress report with them and set an academic goal with your child so that they can achieve that goal in each course by the end of the first nine weeks, which is quickly coming, which is on October the 6th. We also, as the board chair mentioned, have quite a few events coming up this month. I want to bring your attention to two that we want our community to be very involved with. And our Black Tie Reach Gala is quickly approaching on September the 29th. And again, I did say it is a Black Tie event. This formal dinner will be held from 6.30 to 8.30 in the Twiggs County High School Gymnasium. And what REACH is, for those who don't know, it is a program that is, the acronym stands for Realizing Educational Achievement. 
can happen. Individual tickets to that black tie event are tw is $25, and a table can be purchased for $250. And we want you to come out and to support us as we induct five new REACH scholars this year into our REACH program. The REACH program provides a $10,000 scholarship spread over a four-year period to those scholars who maintain a 2.5 GPA, remain crime and drug free, have good attendance, and good behavior. We want to acknowledge those scholars on that night, which is September the 29th. And remember, donations for this scholarship will be accepted for the entire year. But we do, if you are available, encourage you to come out and be with us at that black tie event on September the 29th. Twiggs County Public Schools welcomes back homecoming 2022. We can give a hand of applause for that. <laughs> we welcome back homecoming. Homecoming is on Friday, October the 7th, and our mighty Cobra football team will play the Glasscock County Panthers, and our homecoming queen, king, and court will be transported by the Flag City Corvette Club. Tailgating slots are on sale now, and we want you to purchase those from our school, high school gymnasium ticket box. They'll be on sale now through Friday, September the 23rd. Tailgating will begin on October the 7th from 12 noon and go all the way until 10 p.m. So we want you to come out and have a wonderful time. Everyone is invited to come support our mighty Cobras, and celebrate homecoming 2022 with your family, friends, and your classmates. Board Chair Harris, we have much more on the horizon, but I'll end right there. We have much more things for you coming up with community, but thank you again for the attention to these great events that are coming up in the month of October and September. Thank you, Dr. Buller. We've heard our superintendent's comments, remarks, and our heavy schedule going forward. If you would, govern yourselves accordingly. At this time, we will move into our business agenda. And our business agenda item A is our district request. This is an action item being presented by our superintendent, Dr. Mac Buller. Dr. Bullard, I think you've earned the right to keep your seat to address the community and this board as you yes, deliver your district request. So have your way. Yes, sir. Thank yes, you. sir. Thank you, Board Chair Harris. We do have uh, quite a few district request board members that we'd like to present for your approval on tonight in the form of field trips, facility requests, and fundraisers. You'll see that our new agricultural education instructor, Ms. Morgan Robinson, has planned her fall semester events for the Future Farmers of America, and she has quite a few field trips that she'd like your approval to get this group of future farmers and agricultural specialists engaged in their career. September 23rd and 24th, which is a Friday and Saturday, she'd like to take the FFA club to the Georgia FFA Discovery Company. And that's in Fort Valley, Georgia. And they'll leave that Thursday which it are, where they will also participate in the Central Georgia Career Development Event, which is also going to be in Fort Valley that Thursday, and they'll proceed to that Friday and Saturday event. On October the 11th and 12th, which is a Tuesday and a Wednesday, she'd like to take the group to the FFA Day at the fair, and then the next first day is an agricultural exhibition. The second day is a livestock exhibition, and that will be in Perry, Georgia. Then in October the 19th, which is a Wednesday, and this one is going to be in Moultrie, Georgia, she'd like to take her group to the Georgia Sun Belt Expo. Now that is with approved, uh, pending transportation approval. We understand that it's about two and a half hours away, but with a transportation being approved, she'd like to take her group on that field trip event as well. Monday, November the 3rd, she'd like to take her group back to Fort Valley to the Central Georgia Career Development Events. It'll be on Monday the 3rd of November, 
and Thursday, the 1st of December. And her final activity and field trip that she'd like for your approval will be on Saturday, December the 10th, and she'd like to take her students to Tifton, Georgia, to the Georgia State Career Development Event to expose the students to the different careers in agricultural education. Our fifth grade teachers would like to take their fifth graders to the Starbase Robbins and Museum of Aviation Tuesday through Friday, which is September the 27th through the 30th. They've been taking this, they took this trip last year and it was a great experience for their students and they'd like to take them back again this year. And this will be the fifth graders and they are going to support the science and the math and STEM concepts in their curriculum. Our program for exceptional children would like to take their students on Friday the 7th of October to the Georgia National Fair. There they'll focus on life skills and transition skills from school to work. And our kindergarten teachers would like to take their students to the Lane's Southern Peach Orchard, which is in Fort Valley, on Tuesday the 18th of October. We received an invitation by the Darquez Dinar Foundation just this last week where they provided 100 tickets to celebrate student achievement and character development for the young ladies at the middle high school. And they'd like to take those students for that student achievement and character development event to see the movie The Woman King in Macon, Georgia on Friday the 16th of September. And the final field trip that we're asking for your approval is, again, this one is pending, transportation being approved as well, is the FBLA Fall Motivational Rally that is being held at Six Flags Over Georgia, and that will be on Monday night, uh, on Monday all day, until Monday night from 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. And the FBLA club, led by Ms. Andrea Denson, will be going on that field. We do have one facility request. And this facility request was actually approved last fall. And it was the blood drive that was led by the JROTC. They'd like to, to sponsor the blood drive again this year uh, on Wednesday, the 21st of September and they'll conduct the blood drive in the small gym, and it is being partnered by the uh, Shepherd Community Blood Center in partnership with our JROTC program. We have three fundraisers that have come before us today. Uh, one is from our athletic department. Uh, pending your approval, they'd like to begin the sale of athletic socks by the company Height Socks. Um, if you saw the socks, you would want to buy them right now. I'll tell you, if they get ready to sell them, I'm going to buy me one of every color. They're great looking socks. Um, they'd like to sell those from now through the end of the school year uh, to, to continue to, to raise money for referees and for equipment that's needed in the athletic department. Erica Williams in the PEC department would like to begin a cookie sale to begin raising funds for community-based instruction, uh, trips, and end of the year trip and admissions to different events for the students in the program for exceptional children's department. And Andrea Denson, again, would like to begin a Krispy Kreme donut sale. And that would be to raise money for her FBLA group. And they'll use that money for registrations, trips, and club expenses throughout the year. Uh, Mr. Chair, that concludes our district request in terms of fundraisers, facility requests, and field trips for tonight. Thank you, Dr. Bullard. This time I'll ask for a motion to accept our district requests, our fundraisers, and our field trips and facility requests as presented by our superintendent this evening. I move that motion to accept the district request for all three fields for the field trips, for the fundraisers. Thank you, Ms. Baxter. Um, I have a second. 
Motion has been properly made by Ms. Blackshear and seconded by Ms. King. Any discussion? No discussion. I know you by saying I raise your hand. They accept the motion to approve our district request. Aye. Any opposes? No opposes. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, board members. At this time, we'll move to business agenda item B. This is a CTAE 2023 uh, allocations and greenhouse presentation. This is an action item being presented by our CTAE director, Ms. Andrea Denson. Good evening, Ms. Denson. Good evening. Let's see. Superintendent Bullard, Board Chair Harris, Vice Chair Rouse, Board Members, Community at Large. I would like to present to you tonight the FY23 CTAE budget and greenhouse approval or request. Before we begin, I'd like to start with our vision, which is generating excellence, one team, one goal. And our mission is to inspire, challenge, and prepare all students to compete globally. I always like to start by highlighting the great things that our students are doing within the CTAE department. This year we have four youth apprenticeship students with GEICO. They are Zion Height, Michaela Mitchell, Mariah Shine, and Elijah Stevens. They are doing exceptionally well um, with that apprenticeship. <laughs> this year we would also like to recognize our inaugural cohort of students with the Twist County High School Hutchins Career Academy. That partnership, we have 13 students currently participating in programs at Hutchins. Those students are doing culinary arts, sports medicine, engineering, emergency medical response, and audio, video, and film. Oh. One of the charges that was given to us was to bring back the 400. The 400 hall represents the dual enrollment courses that are being taken with Central Georgia Technical College. This year we opened and we re-established um, our barbering program. We currently have 14 students in that program, and as you can see, they are already actively working. On the left-hand side, you'll see one of our students, he's actually providing a cut to one of the other students in the class, while Mr. Harold, the instructor, is walking him through step-by-step step while cutting another student. And they are currently taking appointments. This year, we have the largest cohort in the CNA program that we have had thus far. And by largest, I mean the largest single high school cohort out of all of the 19 that Central Georgia Tech currently has. And we are the second largest district as far as student enrollment in that program. This year, we have three non-traditional students um, taking that course as well. Next, I would like to speak about our CTAE grant allocations for FY23 as approved by the State Board of Education. This year, under the Carl D. Perkins Five Federal Grants, we have a total allocation of $26,193. These funds will be used to address system and CTAE needs identified in the Comprehensive Local Needs Assessment. The funds used must be tied to a specific overarching need. These funds will also be used to pay for substitutes, travel, CTAE supplies, CTSO, which is our student organizations, and registration for CTAE teachers. It also includes funds for professional development opportunities offered through the CTAE Resource Network. This year, we received the Perkins Plus Grant and the award total of $10,000. In years past, we used this grant to purchase our end of pathway assessment. We wanted to try something different this year. One of the biggest things that we hear when we talk to business and industry is there's a lack of representation for females in the fields of construction and also in engineering. So this year we want to host camps, summer camps for girls. Uh, we want to do the EPIC, which is Programming, Industrial, and Computer Science Girls Only Camp. And we want to do the MAGIC Camp, Mentoring a Girl in Construction. Under our state fund, CTAE grants, we have a total allocation of $24,380. These funds will be used for CTE extended day for our FBLA and FCCLA advisors, 25% of the CTAE director salary, 25% of the CTAE youth apprenticeship coordinator salary, travel to workshops, job sites, and supplies. Um, for the first time in a very long time, we have a full-time ag teacher. So this year we were able to apply for state grants under the Educational Education Grant, and we were allocated a total of $6,944.
These funds are used for CTE extended day and extended year for our agriculture teacher. And we, like I said, we have those funds this year because we have a full-time instructor. This year, we also applied for the state equipment grant, and we were awarded that grant in the total of $90,000. Um, those funds will be used to purchase a new agriculture education lab um, or a greenhouse. Which brings me to that proposal. Are there any questions thus far? The agricultural program is a three-tier program that includes classroom laboratory experience, FFA engagement, and SAE, which is experimental service and or work-based learning implementation. The program, in order to be successful, needs to operate in all three areas. Currently, the conditions of our greenhouse, um, they are it's in dire need of repair which is why we were extremely motivated to apply for the grant and extremely excited when we were awarded it. Um, under our new proposal, we would like to purchase the Educator Series Greenhouse, which is 30 by 72 by 6, and it is provided by Atlas. You will see a breakdown um, on your handouts that you were given of what will come with that greenhouse and what the district is responsible for doing. Um, the grant or the purchase of a greenhouse, including installation and all the work that it would require to prepare for that, comes to $135,664.57. 90000 of that would come from the grant that we were allocated, and the remainder of those funds will come from general funds to ensure that we meet state and local matching requirements. Are there any questions? Thank you. Um, I will wait. So with the greenhouse, you have to fill in vegetables and... Um, yes, ma'am. Um, if you have an opportunity, I would like for you guys to please come over to the um, high school. The agriculture program is going to surprise you. Um, last year, you all approved um, us spending funds to bringing new technology for the students. They are milking cows. They have um, plants that they are growing without having to use soil. I mean, the kids are excited, middle school all the way to 12th grade. Um, even the girls, they come down the hall and they're really excited to go into the classroom. So the agriculture program is really going to impress you. But yes, so you'll see a lot. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I just wonder why, why babies have been up. Um, yes, that was one of the things that she asked about. How do we um, bring some of these things down to elementary? So yes, ma'am. Because I heard a lot of. Mm -hmm. I make sure I visit. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, if this is approved, how long would it take for the greenhouse? Um, in speaking with Atlas, we foresee it happening within the next couple of months, sooner rather than later. Um, we're waiting on approval from the board and also for us to actually do the prep. Um, doctor, I'm going to speak it into existence. Dr. Bacon and I, um, we have a meeting with Peach County. They recently built a new school, and so they have a new greenhouse, so we're going to meet with that director and their ag teacher to tour their facilities this week. Ma'am. The kids say Geico, are they in the building? Or are they, are they um, going? They are, some are in, some are out. Um, but they are doing exceptionally well. They had a final um, earlier this week, and so they did really well. Um, and they're getting rave reviews.
Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Great questions. All right, we've heard the presentation. Uh, this is an awesome opportunity. Thank you for the work that you do. Um, we need that greenhouse. Um, uh, so with no further discussion or question, um, you want to talk about it? Any more questions? Good. All right, at this time, I'll, I'll, Dr. Bullock, what is your recommendation? Uh, board Chair and Board Members, we recommend that you approve the purchase of the greenhouse as well as the use of general funds, build the foundation and the footing for the greenhouse as well. Thank you, Dr. Bullock. Board members, we've heard Ms. Denson's presentation and we heard our superintendent's recommendation. I have a motion to accept our superintendent's recommendation. I make that motion. Motion was properly made by Vice Chair Mr. Rouse. May I have a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Blackshear. Any discussion? No discussion. I know you by saying I raise your hand. Do you accept the motion to approve our purchase of this greenhouse? Uh, any opposes? No opposes. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Denson. Thank you. And this time we'll move to business agenda item C, classroom novel purchase. This is an action item being presented by the one and only Miss Miriam Reardon. Good evening. Good evening, Miss Reardon. Good evening. Good evening, Board Chair Harris. Proceed. Vice Chair Rouse. Board members, Superintendent Dr. Bullard, and our stakeholders. We are a district with a vision, generating excellence, one team, one goal. And our mission is to inspire, challenge, and prepare all students to compete globally. This evening, I'm bringing to you a purchase because the individual purchase exceeds our policy requirements, so it requires board approval. You have already approved the L4GA budget, which is where both of these items are coming from. The L4GA budget for middle school was $99,500. There were line items for classroom libraries as part of the budget that you approved. This current purchase that we're asking for approval of is $39,685.60 for the middle school. We want to build a library full of engaging books that will tempt all of our readers, no matter what their interests are. These selections will strengthen our approach to building literacy more reading means more learning these collections are inclusive they are inspiring to students to overcome challenges a school-wide reading initiative results in students who score higher and achieve more i've gave to you in your board packets the quote from follett for these for both purchases for both schools so you could see exactly what we were purchasing these books will be um, approximately 80, I believe that they are 80 books per title. They are hardcover books. They will be uh, scanned stickers for the media center will be applied to each book from Follett Company. This is the same company that supplies all of our media center books. It's a high quality curriculum content to inspire and challenge our students and to give them global exposure. Our goal is to develop lifelong learners by encouraging reading across all genres. We are all about getting all of our students to love reading. The high school L4GA budget, again, was an additional 99500 The budget was approved with classroom libraries as part of the budget. The current purchase to approve is $52,088.80. Again, these are hardcover with scan stickers for the Media Center accountability, high quality curriculum content to inspire and challenge students and to give them global exposure. I also included some research-based information behind purchasing these books. Student achievement is positively impacted, increases vocabulary, and increases understanding of human behavior when they are exposed to genres that may, they may not be familiar with. Their overall reading comprehension is improved. There will be instruction and vocabulary and practice with fluency, opportunities for teacher lecture, student discussion, and writing about the text. These texts will be taught in chunks for instruction 
but the entire novel is offered to students for enrichment and curiosity. The principal has, um, principal Dr. Simmons has requested the purchase of these books. They meet the needs of her plan to improve student achievement. The teachers have also requested class sets be available to all students so that they can take them home as well. So they won't be one class set that stays in the classroom. It is a book that will be offered to every child, just like a textbook would be done. Are there any questions? Thank you, Ms. Reardon. Any questions for Ms. Reardon? Ms. Reardon, I want to take uh, the opportunity to say good seeing you at the L4GA conference. It was good to see uh, you as well. Uh, it's good to see people go to conference and we actually attend the, the sessions. Uh, <laughs> but it was good talking to you uh, in reference and learning with you um, about L4GA and the things that the state um, other people across the state are doing. I'm glad that we're moving in the right direction. You and I shared some conversations about some ways we could uh, further uh, extend our purchases, and I think this is a great uh, direction. Uh, Dr. Simmons, uh, classroom novels are great, and I love the fact that they can take them home. I heard a parent say a few months ago, I need something tangible, something that I can help them with, and so um, I think this is a, a, a good move in the right direction. As we discussed, I was just sharing with Dr. Bullard in our sidebar, uh, that I would just love to see. I don't know if our budget allows this, uh, and if it doesn't, we won't, we won't rattle. But if we're just ever blessed again, and it may be possible in this, but if we're ever blessed again with the opportunity to receive these funds, uh, you and I just shared about possibly hiring a literacy person, part-time, full-time, maybe a 49er, uh, to come in and assist with these type uh, of projects, to come in and do some uh, literacy intervention, some maybe some push-ins or some pull-outs, uh, some small groups to work with uh, these type novels. I think, uh, Dr. Griffith, we've had this conversation uh, in small also. So just some, uh, just some thoughts uh, to increase that personnel. I don't think we have anyone on staff that has that, le that leisure time to kind of push in to help with those reading uh, interventions. So just a thought. Um, We've heard the recommendation uh, or the presentation from Ms. Reardon. Uh, Dr. Bullard, what is your recommendation? Mr. Chair, I recommend that the board approve the classroom novel purchase as presented by Ms. Reardon. Thank you. Board members, no further questions or concerns? I entertain a motion to accept uh, our superintendent's recommendation for the classroom novel purchase uh, for our uh, middle school. Middle and high school. Motion to proper debate by Ms. Rhonda King. May I have a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Mr. Rouse. Any discussion? No discussion. Are you by saying I raise your hand if you accept the motion for this purchase? Aye. Any opposes? No opposes. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Reader. Thank you. We'll move on to our business agenda item D. This is our ESSER, uh, three, uh, ESSER and our ARP. I'm sorry. Update. Um, this is an information item being presented by Ms. Reardon again. Good evening again, Board Chair Harris, Vice Chair Rouse, yeah. Superintendent Dr. Bullard, board members and stakeholders. And I'd like to remind you again of our vision to generate excellence, one team, one goal, and our mission to inspire, challenge, and prepare all students mm -hmm. to compete globally. As we presented in the past with our ESSER ARP, sometimes it's been called CARES 3, but the real name is ESSER 3 ARP. We have amended it once before, and on the first page, this slide that you see, this is the first amendment that we have already done and was approved. 
Tonight, I'm coming to you with the changes that we are doing in the Second Amendment. We should um, take a look at the S or ARP funds every few months to see what our stakeholders are saying, to see what's happening with student achievement, to see what's happening in the classrooms, to see if we have adjusted needs, um, needs that may not be uh, met, other ways that we would like to meet those needs. The other document that I gave to you, it's a little over 20 pages long. That's what goes with the amendment that gets submitted to the Department of Education. That, that is the amendment is in that document. On page 10 of that document, which is the page that has the percentages all the way down the side of it, that's where you'll see um, another view of what I'm presenting tonight. On page 10 of this amendment, number two, you see that we have increased to 17% our, um, what we are doing to address learning loss. We are required to do, in the total category, we are required to meet 20% of our budget must be provided to address learning loss. Our budget has 26.7% as part of it to directly address learning loss, and then we have um, a much greater percentage that is to address at-risk students and to meet student needs. We've increased to 17% to, to include supporting summers and after-school programs and intervention support, as well as an adaptive curriculum. Our assessments were decreased slightly because our adaptive curriculum has an assessment component within it. Um, all of the adaptive curriculums that we have, such as iReady, you've seen that before, that we have purchased, that we are able to assess our students as we go through that program and utilize it, and so that decreases our need for additional assessments. We are improving our attendance, and we have increased this um, funding source to 7.1%, and this money was shifted from another category. The largest reason for looking at our funds is the school-based health clinic. We've already addressed what the need is in Twiggs County with our um, health rating, and we want to meet that need through the school-based health clinic within the schools. We've increased the support to at-risk students, and we've decreased the amount spent on upgrading HVAC units and the need for PPE or cleaning supplies, largely because we have already completed many of those projects, and we are able to satisfy the needs for the cleaning supplies and additional PPE through our general funds. So there is not as great of a need in the ARP funding source. We have also shifted funds where um, some additional staff did not start at the beginning of the school year last year, so we had additional funds that were left over and we were able to move those to different categories. We are currently able to fund the additional needs of the school-based health clinic through some of these shifts. The needs to change and needs change and funds need to be adjusted. We watch the funds and spending. We intend to be good stewards of this gift of ESSER funds that has been given to us. We monitor the progress of our students. We monitor their student achievement. We adjust to meet student and instructional needs. We listen to stakeholders. We make necessary adjustments to meet needs and stay fiscally responsible. So what you see at the end is the ESSER 3 ARP Amendment 2 in a different view from the same thing that's on page 10, but it's in a uh, pie graph. You'll see that 47% of our funds directly impact student achievement, and the remaining of our funds impact student achievement, but in, in a more indirect way, by providing social emotional support, providing technology for our students, professional development, the school-based health clinic. Um, as you see, we're still supplying um, funding source to air quality and cleaning of buildings, but much less than what we had in the past, and continuity of services, supplies, and retention of staff members. Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you, Ms. Reader. Thank you. This time we'll move to business agenda item E, 
This is our strategic plan instructional blueprint. So the information item being presented by our assistant superintendent, Dr. Shandrina Griffin Stewart. Good evening, Dr. Griffin Stewart. Good evening. Good evening, Board Chair Harris. Proceed. Vice Chair Rouse. Board members, Superintendent Dr. Mac Bullard, all of our stakeholders listening virtually and in person. The strategic plan instructional blueprint. Before I can share this information with you, I am always excited to share that we are a district with a vision and a mission. Our vision is generating excellence, one team, one goal, and our mission is to inspire challenge and prepare all students to compete globally. Our district had an opportunity to participate with Education Elements, who helped us develop our strategic plan. And within that strategic plan, a core team had to participate in the instructional blueprint. That instructional blueprint is outlines our instructional plan. So while we have the overarching strategic plan, the instructional blueprint is housed within the plan to address our instructional program. The team was composed of several members from the elementary, middle, and the high school, along with district office staff. So you can see that the principal at the elementary school, as well as the assistant principal, Ms. Jenkins and Ms. Boston participated, um, two teacher representatives, Ms. Ms. Pearson and Ms. Anderson, and then the instructional coach, Dr. Pope, and Ms. Whitley, Dr. Leonard, participated as the administrators for the middle high school. Ms. Reardon represented the executive director of our title programs. Ms. Erica Jackson, teacher at the Twiggs County High School. Ms. Oaks served as the middle school representative. Ms. Drummer, our director of personalized learning. Ms. Jennifer Williams, our instructional coach. So it was truly a collaborative effort. We tried to make sure that we had all experts involved in the group. So with the instructional blueprint team, we had virtual meetings. These meetings lasted for two, sometimes two and a half hours. And so it was entitled Visioning and Design Workshop. So we started with part one on April the 27th. Part two was May 31st. Uh, alignment planning workshop was June the 15th, and we rounded out with the adoption planning workshop July the 22nd. So what was the team involved in? The Twiggs County Schools Instructional Blueprint is nothing more than a visionary and aspirational document that articulates the core beliefs and characteristics of high quality curriculum instruction and assessment that all Twiggs County Public School teachers and students strive for. So in that work, we focused on six core areas. Student-centered, data-driven research-based, differenti differentiated and personalized, rigorous and intentional, emphasis on the whole child, and high expectations for all. So what the team had to do during those sessions is we focused on each core element. But each time we focused on each core element, we worked through the instructional blueprint design canvas. So you have a thick packet um, of the instructional blueprint design in your packet. And so this gives you a glimpse of the process that we went through to um, come up with our instructional vision. But what were some of the things the team was charged with each time we met? We had a protocol that was now new and next. So with the now, when we looked at a core element, we had to address what does the school do now related to this strategy? What will implementation look like one to two years from now? And what will full implementation look like years from now? So we had to provide description and details. We had to talk about the outcomes, what changes we expected to see, the progress indicators, how we measure that progress, and success indicators. We even went down to our research resources and materials needed. So this team was able to talk about what resource we, resources that we currently have and use and what are some things we need moving forward. So we plan for the now and then we plan for the future. And so I definitely wanna thank those team members for participating 
because we had homework every time we left. And so that homework helped us to bond and become even closer in the work um, to support instruction. And so what it um, ended up publishing is our instructional vision. So this is a part of our branding. You will see um, the instructional vision. It's back in front. And you'll see the instructional vision. There are four highlighted areas that our community, our parents, as well as our students and teachers will focus on. So when you look at the instructional vision, you have it, a copy of it, it's student center. And with the student center part, it just states, Twiggs County Public Schools strives for student centered learning. We believe in the value of meeting students where they are and planning for student learning that takes into account student interest, experience, strengths, and personal goals. And then data driven and research based, differentiated and personalized, and rigorous and intentional. So you'll see that the caption under the last three reads the same as the Twiggs County Public Schools will design curriculum instruction and assessment practices around research and best practices. We will collect and analyze data from daily, unit, topic, and interim assessments on an ongoing basis to inform instruction. So this truly is a part of our branding. And if you look on the back of the flyer, you will see that it's Twiggs County Public Schools. We are in the heart, the, um, the center of Georgia, the heart of Georgia, and it's high expectations for all. And you see our mission and our vision. So you will see these being generated in our community as well as communicated to our community and our parents. And then you will see this visibly going up in our school. Are there any questions? I don't see Mr. Watkins this evening. I don't hear no camera, but that's okay. This natural light is hitting just right. Now give me a moment to take a selfie with the board. I'm dead serious. Thank you. Ms. Jenkins can appreciate that. Thank you. Dr. Griffin Stewart, amazing presentation. Board members, do you have any questions? Seeing none. Thank you, Dr. Griffin Stewart. Thank you. You're welcome. Come on, Doc, one more. You know he like taking a picture. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, Alan. Hey, Ariel. Our business agenda item F. Ms. Kelly Services update. This is an information item being presented by Ms. Ariel Smith. Good evening. Good evening, um, Board Chairman Harris, Vice Chairman Rouse, uh, Superintendent Dr. Bullard, and Board Members, Community of Twiggs County, uh, Board of Education staff, everybody that's here. It is great to be back. How y'all doing? How you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm very good. I'm coming off of a, a birthday weekend. My birthday was last Monday. I am a Disney fan, so I went on a Disney high, and I'm coming back from California, and y'all got me here at 6 o'clock. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm running off of caffeine. But um, I am glad to be here. So uh, I'm here to present uh, just our partnership information uh, from Kelly Education with our substitutes that we have here at Twiggs County. Um, thank you. Daisy, you can go ahead and move forward. Thank you. 
So I wanted to share with you this time, the same thing that we did last uh, February, actually, of this year. Um, we have increased our applicant pool uh, a little bit by 115 applicants. Um, this consisted of applicants from Warner Robins, from Fort Valley, and Macon. Um, we would like to move a little bit further south, um, which is what we're working on for this year in increasing our range for applicants to bring in some good uh, candidates and substitutes for TWIGS. Um, along with that, we have interviewed and onboarded 46. So you can see the difference. Um, the reasons why some have decided not to move forward within that number, um, in interviewing them, we did discover that they wanted to stop the process either because the pay rate was, and I want to stress was, too low, or that they could not afford the fingerprinting fee. Um, since then, we have made some strides and some changes, and of course, y'all know why. So we're going to move forward. Now we've hired total applicants, uh, hired 16. This is outside of those that joined or transitioned from Twigs to Kelly Education. So this is an additional 16 that Kelly has hired in total. Um, we did have a few that dropped off of the total active substitute pool, substitute pool. Now this is 29 substitutes that are actively working for Twigs County. Um, this includes clerical that we have hired, teachers, paras, custodials, um, food service. This includes the whole, uh, the entire total active substitute package. And in addition to that, I do want to highlight some of the reasons. Um, we had three substitutes that transitioned to work for Twix County School Board, so thank you very much. It's really good to see when they transition and they start to work for the school district because that's what this is about. It's not in getting substitutes just for us, but it's also supplying you guys with a good pool of applicants to bring into the district. Um, because of you, we have, you guys have increased the pay rates, um, and that will definitely draw in more candidates, so thank you. Um, we are also connecting with local schools with using my connections in some of the, um, some of the schools and colleges that we have here, and speaking with the directors and the departments of education directly. So that way we can bring upcoming teachers to come in and be substitutes and then transition into the district if the schools like them or if they see fit, if they're doing an amazing job and they wanna bring them on board full time, then that's what we're here for. Um, and also we have a fall job fair that will be coming up as well. In addition to some of the things that we have done, I wanted to highlight um, Kelly Education's appreciation events along with some of the school districts. Um, we believe in appreciating who you have in the moment that you have them. So with that, we were able to do a February, and I think this was shortly after I did the presentation for the last board meeting, we were able to go to, I believe, the rival uh, basketball game that you guys had, and it was also around Valentine's Day. So I'm like, who don't like to eat around Valentine's Day? Let me give some of these guys a break and, uh, and give them a gift card. So we were able to do a raffle with the community that was there. We gave away a $50 Applebee's gift card, um, candy bags, and also little pocket information. So that way, if anyone was in a crowd and they received this candy bag, they were also able to get a card that told them how to become a substitute and that we were hiring. Um, we also did a $250 Amazon gift card, and this was a Kelly giveaway, and it went for any substitute uh, that was working for Kelly. So that included here in Twigs as well as other districts. Um, we were also able to do, and we're still doing this, a $100 referral bonus. So any of our substitutes that we do have that are currently working, they are able to refer a substitute to come and work within Twigs County, and with that, they get a $100 bonus. I'm going to say it again. Any substitute <laughs> that is currently working for Kelly or working in Twigs County, if they refer a friend and they're able to be hired and they work for Twigs, they get $100. This is for every single substitute. So if you have one sub that, subs that refers five individuals, they get $500. This is just something uh, that we do at Kelly just to give back to our subs. And it's also great because the holiday season is coming up. So if I have any subs that are watching, refer some friends. 
Um, we also have substitute appreciation stations. I will come around to different um, schools, and uh, this year what I decided to do, because I know Subway is here, is I went to Subway, and I believe I bought up all their gift cards uh, <laughs> that they had on file, so, or that they had on stock. So I, uh, we did like little gift bags with, um, with Subway gift cards and chips and sodas and, and just a little token of thank yous, like notebooks and pens, just to, to, to give them a thank you. It was very, it was small, but people don't know how you feel about them until you show them. So we wanted to do that for them, and we delivered them around to the elementary school and the middle high school. Um, and some of the subs were very surprised because we didn't tell them that we were coming. They just dropped by, or I just dropped by. And then we also at Kelly at the end of last year, and I don't know if they're going to do it again this year. I'm hoping that they do. But there was a $5,000 Kelly Substitute of the Year award, $5,000 that was given to a substitute. Now, I'm going to say this. I want tweaks. <laughs> if they do this next time, I want y'all to win. That means that there needs to be photos, videos, because when I saw some of the, the individual or the individual that did win, this person had, I think, it was almost like a highlight reel, like ESPN. It was crazy. Um, but they had uh, photos, videos. Um, board members that were talking about how awesome this substitute was and it was just completely over the top so I know the twigs way y'all better come through because <laughs> I want a substitute if we do it again this year to win uh, for 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 twigs these are our moments of the year I took a couple of photos just because you know, when you when the sunlight is hitting just right, you got to get the photo when it's every there. time, every, every time. time. So, <laughs> the first photo that you see with the big Kelly uh, mobile branch that is our mobile branch. Um, I share this picture all the time because it I had that thing parked I think in my in my driveway for three weeks, and my husband has an F one hundred and fifty. I have a tiny little Honda. We were both parked on one side of the driveway, and then the Kelly mobile van <laughs> was in the other one. I am 5'3", but I was willing that thing. Um, but that was outside in front, and it was such a beautiful day, so I, I just I couldn't help it, and I took a picture. That was also one day that we had a substitute, Loretta Stevens, who recommended a substitute to come. She came immediately that same day, got hired, did her fingerprinting, and was hired within the week and started working, I think, the next week. So it just it speaks volume when you have substitutes who work, who are able to get the word out, and who are able to, to send someone to you immediately. We also have Miss Stanley and her team down at the bottom. They did a superhero day, and our substitute is in the black, Miss Joyce. Um, we also did the two pictures, me and my coworker, Carrie. We came during that uh, February raffle. And then that's just a picture, sorry, my living room rug floor of uh, the gift bags that we did for the substitutes that we came and delivered. Now, this says, does somebody say pay increase in bonus? Yes, they did. Um, again, thank you, thank you, thank you. It means a lot when the substitutes are included in bonuses that generally does not include them because you guys may not realize, but a lot of districts do not include their substitutes and bonuses. So the fact that you decided to include your substitutes into that bonus package meant a lot to them, and I know it did. Um, and then also the pay increase. Because of that, we are now seeing a trickle of, of applicants that are coming in, and it did increase from last February to this one. And I was told again last night that I think we had an additional five that added or that, uh, that applied. And I did see two while I was here today. So that just shows that with the pay increases that you guys approved, it is working and it is generating and we are gonna get more. So I'm very, very happy and I do wanna thank you for that. I appreciate it. So this is our continued focus. Um, we are going to re-engage those previous substitutes who unfortunately for the past um, few years decided to 
either sit back or not come back into the schools. We are still re-engaging them. We do not give up on them because we know that they do not give up on the kids. So we do want to go back and, and, and still touch base with them on a monthly basis. I try not to bug them. Um, just to make sure that they know that we still want them. Uh, Twig still needs them. And they can still come on and meet me here when I'm here every other Tuesday. Um, again, I'm still collaborating with the collegiate departments for the Department of Education. Because like I said, I do want to pull those who are working in the educational field. Because this is what they want to do. So why not go ahead and get them in here so they can be substitutes and then transition to be a district employee. Use us to filter who you want um, to be in your family. And we're doing a uh, additional hosting and attending other community events. So some of the events that you guys have mentioned, I have wrote down and we will be, be uh, finding out how we can uh, contribute and how we can be involved. Um, one of the events that I do want to announce, uh, me and Ms. Dotseek is kind of uh, TBD'd, which is a fall date for the end of September. That's going to be our substitute hiring event. We will host it right here. Um, so if you know of anyone that you would like to send, please do. Um, we'll be here pretty much all day on that day. We'll also be highlighting monthly substitutes. Um, we do a substitute spotlight. This is generated by... The principals, the teachers, the staff, everyone who um, knows those substitutes and working in their building, we want you guys to, to nominate them because we give them and send them different uh, packages, cute things. I just ordered a ton of stuff. I know my lead is probably watching. He's going to be like, what did you do? I ordered a lot. <laughs> so I want to make sure that those substitutes who are being recognized and who are doing a great job, they're actually uh, going to be recommend or they'll be uh, presented with these monthly substitute spotlights. Oh, and also thank you for allowing us to be all aboard. Uh, one of the events that I that we got a chance to do. Thank you for inviting us to do the luncheon that we did for the new teachers um, for this year. And we also were able to do a, a new teacher training with them as well. Um, but the lunch, and I said that if they invited me to do a lunch that I was going to put some people to sleep. I hope I did. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was a, a pleasure to see all the faces and to see all the plates um, because that meant that I, I like to feed people. So when I saw that, that made me feel good and made, feel, made me feel like we did our job. So thank you. Um, I hope I continue to be invited, and I appreciate your support. Any questions? Thank you, Ariel. <clears throat> First of all, thank you for your sponsorship. Uh, I appreciate you uh, having that lunch sponsored. I think I ate that day. Uh, in addition to that, um, <clears throat> we were in full transparency. We were on the fence about killer services um, and its inception to the district. Uh, one thing that I am appreciative of that I know that I got some calls about uh, and we had shared some conversation with Dr. Buller in reference to the application process and uh, that that it was a easy fix for you uh, and, it, and it didn't have to be but we appreciate you uh, obligating your time on Tuesdays and it may be more days than Tuesday but I'm familiar with Tuesdays from about 10 to 2 that you come here to central office and you allow people to come over and you assist them uh, with the application process and we needed that extra support so I do appreciate you for that. In reference to our pay, <clears throat> we do know that our pay was a little low <clears throat> in the beginning and we, we, we worked on that <clears throat> so we appreciate the board uh, with approving that pay increase. Now, sitting here listening to your presentation and having a sidebar once again with Dr. Bullard, I want to uh, um, give the board some food for thought. In our surplus sales, our land um, sales, uh, possibly our facilities usage fees. Um, one of the second uh, situations we had was paying $50 for a background fee. As a local uh, 
uh, that's interested in subbing, I just may not have $50 uh, until that next little chick comes. Um, and then if you ask me to pay the $50 back, it's kind of like I'm subbing for free uh, in, in, in a month or so. Now we do know that $50 may not be a stretch for you, uh, but it may be a stretch for me if I'm in dire need of employment right. and I'm just a good fit right. to be a, 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 a sub. My idea is I, I want to stretch the board's generosity. <clears throat> we average about, we averaged this year, I, sh I should say average, we had about 24 to 28 new hires, Dr. Bullock. All right, and we have less than 20, uh, we have less than 20 substitutes throughout the district in every department. Am I right? Yes. We have less than 20. Yes. So if we took about 40 people and did $50, math's not my thing, slick ELA is, about 2K, about $2,000. Uh, well, the board to consider exhausting uh, that that background fee for our new hires and for our subs. I won't do any comparisons and talk about how we spend other monies, but uh, two thousand uh, uh, dollars. Or retention is black shear. That's putting your money where your mouth is. Food for thought. A little further engaging conversation. Hopefully, the board can respond. Um, oh, so Dr. Buller, are we currently charging the subs? Maybe not. We may not be. On the, it may be on the back, like we may just exhaust it on the back end. Okay, so because we don't have, Ariel, can you give us the number of uh, uh, subs that we have currently? 20, 29. We have 29. Mm -hmm. Looking at the district, and we make some great hires uh, this year, we'll look at, to retain those hires. Yeah. So we won't have 20 positions open in the 2023-2024 school year. So we're looking less than 20 because we won't need 29 subs. Possibly. Give or take, we won't have 40 <laughs> new employees in Tweeds County next year. Okay. So the board would consider allocating $2,000 for background checks in our budget. Keep in mind, we're talking retention and we're talking what makes tweaks attractive. So, 2000 is not, not you know, the board eats steak dinners when we had no steak dinner, y'all. But that would be the cost. Something to consider. Is that all right to consider, Mr. Mike? Nice considered. Thank you, Mr. Rath. We, we heard you, Mr. Chairman. All right. We will consider it. All right. I appreciate it. That's all I needed to hear. Vice Chair said we'll consider it. <laughs> Thank you, Ariel, for a great Thank presentation. Uh, Thank you, board, for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. All right. So the pressure's on these last two presentations to get us done by, 11, by 720. So this is business agenda item G. <laughs> Anatomy of Your Health Workshop Update. This is information item being presented by Dr. Johnny Simmons, our first presentation to the Board of Education. Welcome to Twigs County, Thank Dr. You. Simmons. Thank you so very much, Board Chair Harris. You're welcome. Vice Chair Rouse, board members, Dr. Bullard, community members, and stakeholders. I would first like to begin by thanking you. Thanking you for entrusting me with your precious children here at the Twiggs County Public School System. Um, it has got to be the best kept secret in Georgia. It is a pleasure and I thank you for your trust in me. Today I will be, be presenting for you for informational purposes only 
um, our update on the anatomy for your health um, initiative that we had. But first, I would again like to stress that we are a district with a vision, and that is of generating excellence, one team, one goal, and our mission, which is to inspire, challenge, and prepare all students to compete globally. This initiative fit right into that mission statement. It was a partnership with Mercy University School of Medicine, Biomedical Sciences, and the Anatomy of Your Health Initiative. The background and purpose of the event was uh, Mercy University School of Medicine invited the Twiggs County School District to participate in the Anatomy for Your Health study. The study was designed to further the understanding of the role anatomy education plays in synthesizing high school students to common lifestyle behaviors that contribute to the diseases of the heart, lungs, and liver, such as poor nutrition, alcohol abuse, or substance abuse. The research was, I'm sorry, the research study was designed to determine whether the introduction of clinical anatomy topics to high school students would improve their health, literacy, and inspire lifestyle changes that would eventually promote their health and well-being. To be invited to this event um, was, was for us a phenomenal opportunity. We were one of four high school, um, school districts in Georgia which were actually invited to participate. So those other high schools were Fitzgerald High School College and Career Academy, Washington County High School, Ben Hills High Schools, and two um, schools actually in Kenya. One was a school for boys and one was a school for girls. The CNA program students were the students that participated in this event. Um, we chose those students because of the track that they are currently on. As Ms. Denson shared with you earlier, we are very proud of our CNA program and where we are. Uh, we hear great things from the community about what we're doing with that program. The program has 14 students currently enrolled in it. Um, all 14 could not participate, but not because they did not want to. Four of those students had other um, academic obligations, such as either um, dual enrollment with Hutchins, or they were um, work-study students who went to GEICO. So that left us with 10 participants, and of those 10, only one student opted out of the opportunity. So we had nine students that actually participated. Parent, guardian, consent forms were collected for all participants, and they, they competed, I'm sorry, completed a pre-anatomy for your health survey form, and they also had to do some um, quizzes that they had to do after they watched some videos over those three areas dealing with the heart, the lungs, and the liver. On August the 17th, students participated in a virtual workshop in the Twist County Media Center alongside with those students from Kenya. Um, the interesting thing was on the day of the workshop, we were the only school in Georgia that participated. Everyone else was not, you know, was not there. So we were very proud of that. Um, with partnership from Dr. Chalk, Dr. Kiera, and Dr. Joan Anderson from Mercer, they helped to organize the event. Um, you can see on the next slide just an example of the pre-event survey that the students had to participate in. We took them to the media center on the Monday prior to the event. Um, the next slide will show an actual picture of the students. Um, Mr. Bass, if you will, the next one. It shows them in the computer lab, um, and the students are engaged. And I hope that you see the non-traditional students that participated. Look at those males in there. And so that, when we talk about that non-traditional student, those are the kids that we're talking about. Um, on the big day, Dr. Bullitt was there to support the event, as was I. And you see me standing there, and I'm talking to the kids. I was actually a CNA student when I was in high school. Um, I realized quickly that I do not like blood or nor pain nor gore. So when I got to college, that quickly changed to English. <laughs> I'll read about it. I don't want to see it. Um, our students did a fantastic job representing Squiz County Public Schools. They were actively engaged in conversation, posed a number of questions. Um, Dr. Seth Clary, Dr. Miller Cohn, and Dr. Caitlin Holder were the um, resident physicians from Mercer University, each one led a segment dealing with those topics. And as you can see, those are just, you can see the, the school from Kenya. Um, the, the Kenyans, um, the students, they actually had a delay in the start of school that week because of um, political elections. And so those kids actually came in when school was not in session to participate. And they were so excited, as were our kids. 
to be able to talk to children in another country. It was a beautiful thing to see them interact with each other. The next slide shows the post-event survey that the students participated in um, for each one where they just had to answer some questions about the initiative itself. And I just want to say that, uh, again, the students represented Twins County Public Schools very well. They were actually asking, when is the next one? They want to do it again. And we want for them to do it again. The um, schools, the systems that were chosen, the students asked about why. And what they were um, informed of was um, Twins County in terms of our health. We have some of the lowest health conditions in the state um, dealing with poor nutrition, substance abuse, as well as alcohol abuse. And so they wanted the students to see the effects of this so that we can begin to engage in these conversations. And so the students, with them all being CNA um, candidates and having some interest of going into the medical field, because some kids want to be nurses, but we have some that want to be doctors in this program. So it is a great program. I'm happy that we were able to bring it back and just know that the students represented you all very well. I was a very proud principal, as I always am. Any questions for me? Seeing none. Thank you, Dr. Simmons. Oh, thank you. Our final business agenda item H. This is a police uh, vehicle purchase. Uh, information item presented by Chief Waller. All right, Chief, the whole table of people over there waiting on you. All right, proceed. That's perfect. Thank you. Good afternoon, Superintendent Dr. Bullard, Board Chair Harris, uh, Vice Chair Rouse, Board Members, and members of the community. I'm Earl Wall, I'm your Campus Police Chief. This is our new hire, our full-time officer. Thanks to you all, we're able to hire a full-time officer who is primarily stationed at the elementary school. So thank you, this is Officer Sean Hamilton. <clears throat> Tonight, I'm going to be presenting on a proposal to purchase a new campus police vehicle. Before I get into my presentation, our vision here at Twiggs County Public Schools is to generate excellence in one team, one goal. Our mission is to inspire, challenge, and prepare all students to compete globally. What you have there is a picture of our police department. Uh, Ms. Jenkins, Officer Hamilton, myself, one of our uh, part-time officers, and the students, which is primarily why we do what we do, to uh, keep our students safe. The parents trust us to educate them and uh, keep them safe, and as officers, we take our job very seriously. Our mission as the police department is to serve, educate, and protect the students, faculty, and staff of Twix County Public Schools through uh, dedication, professionalism, and active cooperation with the community and respect for human dignity. Our core values, uh, we are committed to the highest level of professionalism. We expect our officers to work, to work to the best of their abilities. We recognize that our authority is derived from the people that we serve. Uh, we recognize that the best method of leadership is through example. Is there another? Our objective tonight is to purchase a 2022 Wilkes County Board of Education campus police vehicle for the purposes of serving and protecting the students, faculty, and staff of Wilkes County Public Schools. Note this purchase will be made from our SPLOS referendum. And how do we utilize 
uh, the campus police vehicle. First and foremost, it's a 24-hour emergency response vehicle as directed by the superintendent. Um, we're available 24 hours a day if there's an emergency, and uh, Dr. Buller calls myself or Officer Hamilton. We're coming to the school full gear ready to do whatever we need to do. It's an emergency transport for students, faculty, and members of the public. I've transported every last one of them from Russian kids to the hospital, or every now and then somebody might need to go to jail. Um, it's campus patrol and traffic control. Um, it's a visible deterrent to criminal activity. Uh, GEMA recently came out and uh, did an assessment. And one of the recommendations, which we're looking what's the best way to secure uh, the playground at JES, and uh, she said the best deterrent would be an actual marked vehicle uh, parked out by the uh, field when the kids are out playing. And if we got another vehicle, we can definitely make that happen every day. Um, it all, it's also storage for quick access to life-saving equipment where we're able to effectively engage any physical or potential threat. It's a convoy. Uh, we escort the teams across the state of Georgia and to uh, other events as directed by the superintendent. So our current vehicle is a 2010 Chevy Tahoe. It's got a little over 213 miles. It's been very well maintained. Um, things we need to take into consideration is future maintenance costs. And once a vehicle gets to a certain age, does it make sense to, to maintain it? Um, if you all were to approve and we were to get a new vehicle, um, both vehicles will be striped with the new department logo. One will be issued to Officer Hamilton, and it will be assigned primarily to JS, and we'll have another striped vehicle assigned to the middle high school. Here's some statistics from the U.S. Department of Commerce and the National Bureau of Standards. Keep in mind, these are primarily stats for a patrol vehicle, which they're driven a little harder than how we drive our vehicles on campus. But the typical lifespan of a police vehicle is three to 10 years, depending on the model. Uh, fleet service records show that police vehicles have an average lifespan of about seven years, and that's 72,000 to 80,000 miles. So we're uh, far beyond that. Our first option, is a 2022 uh, police Tahoe with the police package that comes at a total cost of uh, $41,000. Our second option is a 2022 Ford Explorer with the police package that comes at a total cost of about $35,700. $35,700. And just a few stats on both, some pros and some cons. Pros to the Tahoe, you're going to get more storage space. Um, you can fit more passengers in it. It gets about 28 miles per gallon highway. Um, it comes at a, a higher initial cost, and it doesn't have quite the same amount of gas efficiency as the Explorer. Some of the pros and the cons to the Explorer, again, it also has 28 miles per gallon highway. Uh, 27 city, which is about two or three miles more than the Tahoe. It comes at a lower initial cost to the district. Um, the cons are it has less storage space. But that's for equipment and for passengers. This is just an information item. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> I want to comment on your, it's just the information item statement. It ain't just the information item. If it was just information, we just listen to you. As, right, you as want, of right, right now, it's just an information item. Oh, is it yeah. something you want? Absolutely. I is think it something the district I, need? I think it's something we need as a department and for the school district. Okay. Um. 
They got new cars in 2022. Yeah. Well, Dr. Bullock, what do you see uh, in our near future with, with, with uh, building this? I mean, I see what you're doing, but uh, <laughs> I'm watching your work now. So, uh, with these officers, um, I do like I, I do believe in branding and having what we need in the district. Uh, what you have in the district is less you have to ask for others or for of others. Uh, I see, you know, it's escorting being es or escorting the buses to games and um, you know just uh, police presence for safety. Uh, so much going on, um, but that that safety piece being part in front of uh, all of our, um, our buildings. Um, it's, it's, uh, I, I would like to know, uh, purchase one this year, Chief may come next year, maybe uh, another, and we build a fleet uh, of this. I mean, we have to talk about some other transportation things, I guess, um, in our fleet. Things. So I think this is a good conversation. Um, Chief, my vote would be on the Tahoe. Uh, but let's 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 have some, some conversation. Uh, I do see the need. I do, I do. Uh, but let's have some conversation, Chief. Uh, when would you uh, present this as a, an action item? At the board's pleasure. Okay. The bullet is something that um, in 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 real time. Okay. The mic off. Can you hear me now? <laughs> We're doing a comprehensive, thank you, board chair. We're doing a comprehensive safety audit and study in our school district. And we literally are looking at every door, every window, every chain link fence that we have, every potential threat that could do what we never want to have which is our most valuable resource, be harmed. And that's our children and our staff. Mm -hmm. We know and have been confirmed by GEMA that just by seeing a uniform and seeing a car, it deters many potential threats. And you all know that our precious little ones don't have that visibility in front of them. And if these men had to hunt down somebody that tried to do harm, only one of them had to be. So we've had requests as well to begin to provide more uh, police presence, even with our groups that are traveling. We don't do that with all of our middle school sports. We've had more requests. I've been getting more and more requests with that, that we provide a police presence, police escort. We do it with our varsity sports, but it has not been our practice to do it with our middle school sports. Those sports sometimes run consecutively, so we couldn't do it. Somebody would have to go with that. So we are at that onset. Mr. Austin and Mr. Bacon will be bringing to you in the next month a detailed a security overview um, in which state agencies have been and given their professional opinion as well. But we do have some things that, in terms of highest priority, that we need to address now. We need to address it now uh, in order to ensure that in the event some danger does present itself as it has in many school districts in the last six months, that our school system will be ready. Um, we need to get it there. We would have no recourse, no excuse to our parents, our community, our loved ones as to why we did not get it ready. So uh, board members, we will be asking for your support to help move us for forward with some of the things that we've learned that our immediate needs, uh, and then there are some things that we can phase in over time. But we do have some things that 
we believe we'll need your support arm pretty quickly and a vehicle for our officers is one. I would just like to say because we don't want neither one of our teams to be going without the middle school. They need support. You know, need you guys with them as well. And I understand you, but both of them. You mean on that too? Yeah, yeah, proceed. Uh, and I'd like to come in on that with uh, for us. I was listening to Superintendent Bullock, and he was saying that we were not supporting as far as following the middle school. But he said in the prior statement also that we don't want nothing to happen to none of our babies. When they go out of town, they're still our babies. So we need to make sure that we cover them no matter where they're at. Either if they're home or they're going off on the bus route, we need to make sure they're covered. Thank you, uh, Dr. Bullet. Thank you, Ms. Batshaw. Thank you, Mr. Rouse. Chief, I have a task for you. Yes, sir. When you come back before us in October, uh, uh, we're gonna give we're gonna give you some partners uh, that love our district and love us. We're gonna give you some name of some uh, shops that we've done business with. We're gonna also allow you to explore on your own and. Make you earn your, your, your key as you've done in the past. I want you to provide us with a quote for two vehicles. All right. Yeah. In the Twigs way, we want it new. All right. Yes, sir. And I think the board agrees with me that we want a Tahoe. Silence gives consent. And we'll hear from you next month. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you to everyone who presented before the board tonight. We appreciate the time and effort that it takes to put into these presentations to give a full story of what we're doing and what we want to do in our district. So thank you so much. I know that. Uh, Presentations in addition to your regular day job it, 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 and, and Dr. Bullock's approval. It's not an easy task. So thank you. Um, so, Dr. Bullock, board members, have we exhausted our business agenda for tonight's meeting? Well, Chair, we have exhausted the business agenda for tonight. All right. Seeing that we've exhausted our business agenda, uh, we'll take a little time and go into executive session. This time we have a board member. Give me a motion to exit a public session and enter into our executive session. Motion proper made by Ms. Blackship. I have a second. Second by Ms. King. Again, this motion is to uh, exit our public session and enter into executive session. All in favor, I know you by saying aye. Raising your hand. Aye. Any opposes? No opposes. That motion carries unanimously. To which kind of we're now into our executive session. Thank you.
Good evening again to our online communities as well as our in-person uh, stakeholders. Thank you, Senior Cabinet, for your patience. Thank you uh, to our viewers for your patience. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to ex exit executive session and enter back into our public session. So moved. Motion has been properly made by Ms. Basham. Have a second. Second. Second by Ms. King. Any discussion? No discussion. I know everybody saying I raise your hand. Or you accept the motion to enter into public session. Aye. Any opposers? No opposed. That motion carries unanimously. We're back in public session. <laughs> Tweaks County, in our executive session, we entertain our superintendent's recommendations for uh, transfer of appointments as well as acceptance of resignation. May I have a motion to accept our superintendent's Recommendation for transfer for appointment for EID 3382 and acceptance for resignations for EID 3375. So moved. Motion and problem made by Ms. Keem. I have a second. Yeah. Second by Vice Chair Ross. Any discussion? No discussion. Only by saying aye. You raise your hand if you accept the motion. Aye. Any opposers? No opposed. That motion carries unanimously. Dr. Bullet, does this conclude? Yeah, oh. Mr. Chair and board members, this concludes our regular board agenda as well as executive session. Board members, do you have any discussion or conversation on any moves made tonight as, as far as personnel or our business agenda that we executed? Seeing none, we have a motion for adjournment. Motion for proper made by Ms. Blatt. may have a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Ross. Any discussion? No discussion. Only by saying aye. Raise your hand. You accept the motion for adjournment. Aye. Any opposes? No opposed. That motion carries unanimously. Good night, Tweaks County. <laughs>